for missing mother Samantha Murphy. The community of Ballarat is planning a so-called mega search for the Victorian woman who's been missing for 18 days after vanishing during a morning run. I'm joined now by bushcraft expert Jake Kassar, who's travelled from New South Wales to train locals hoping to find clues of Samantha's whereabouts. Jake, welcome to Midday. Thanks for joining us. Can you explain what is bushcraft and how can it assist in this search? Well, I guess it's a quite a special brand of bushcraft. It's focused more on tracking, so it's looking out for any signs we might find on the ground, any disturbances. It could also be uh, bird alarm calls or certain animals all congregating or moving towards a certain area that could give clues that could help us unlock this mystery. Uh, we're not here to interfere with the authorities. I've got a great deal of respect for the police and the SES that have been out here on the ground. Uh, you know, but I think we can certainly complement that. And imagine if we found a mobile phone, a blouse, whatever it might be, that can help provide some answers here. There's been 18 days of searching already and a huge community effort. Is it possible a clue has been overlooked? Oh, absolutely. I've seen many areas in here, again, not taking anything away from the authorities and the volunteers that have been out here, but I've seen many areas that we call virgin bush, so they've been completely untouched. Uh, there's been no compression marks, nowhere where the really spindly, dry bracken fern, which breaks quite easily, has snapped off. So that's what I'm here to do for the next couple of days, is get into as much of that scrub and be a bit like a dog with a bone and just search as many areas as I can around here that haven't been searched yet. Jake, you've been flown in. Uh, how much do you have to rely on local knowledge of the search area? Oh, it always helps to get a little bit of local knowledge. I met up with some traditional custodians on day one when I came in, mainly to show my respect and hopefully get their blessing to walk the country here, which I was able to. Um, but a bit of local knowledge can be really helpful, and that's the first thing I did was meet up with a group of locals. The next thing I did was get up to the highest lookout in this area so I could have a look at the overall topography and see whether or not in a large area, even if someone had an injury, whether they'd eventually be able to make themselves, we call it a safe zone in an area when we're searching because there's, you're always going to reach a creek, a road, some kind of handrail we call it in tracking, which can guide you out of the bush and to civilization. So there's quite a few places like that. We have concentrated our searches around the edges of the thick bushland in those areas as well. We've circumnavigated every single dam we can find, but one thing I'd really like to reach out to more men in the community, particularly those that have done a bit of orienteering, uh, the, the hunters in the area, we're in a rural area so I'm imagining there's some hunters and their dogs that can come out and support what is predominantly women in the community. You've got a woman missing here, so a lot of people, are, a lot of the women in particular are very, very nervous to get out and about, but it's about 90% women that are helping with the search now. We really need the fellas to step up. You've already met with locals, uh, as you've said, and you've provided some training already. What sort of training are you giving them? Also, we went through tracking terms today, so discussing different types of disturbances, uh, entry and exit points. So if someone was entering into the bush in a certain area, we'd expect that a lot of the foliage would be pushed in that direction. There'd be compressions on the ground. We spoke about discardables, which may be some, some kind of evidence that we can provide for the police. Obviously, if we found a mobile phone, a weapon, a tool, uh, uh, Sam was wearing ear pods. So if we found anything like that, what to specifically keep an eye out for, make sure we do a pin drop to that point, make sure we get photographs and of course liaise everything straight with the police and, um, and crime stoppers. But it's also been about safety. If there's going to be people searching in this area, particularly with all the mine shafts in here, the horizontal ones, um, the vertical ones rather, uh, it's really, really important. Safety first. We don't need someone else getting injured, lost or worse out here. What is the situation with the mine shafts? Uh, are they all, um, you know, safe or um, are they effectively holes in the really ground? We don't have where mine shafts in? where I'm from, so I know nothing about them. So wish me luck that I don't okay. end up falling in one. All right, Jake. Um, you've been involved in other high-profile cases. Uh, are you confident something will be found during Saturday's mega search? It's really hard to say, but, you know, this is somebody's mother, you know, somebody's daughter, somebody's wife. We really need all hands on deck here, and I'm really... You know, calling on the community in Ballarat and beyond to come out, especially the men in different areas and, and just other people. I'm not taking anything away from the women for a second that have that bush, um, bush experience to get out and absolutely comb this area. As I said, with all due respect to the police and the volunteers, they couldn't have possibly searched all the areas of bushland here and out of town. Let's just make sure we leave no stone unturned and hopefully get the family and the authorities the answers they need and, and even more hopefully get uh, Samantha home safely. Yeah, Jake Kassar, thank you so much for joining us. Bushcraft expert there, and we wish all of me. the searchers well.